Rods. And we're going to finish off this video now by looking at some of the more famous polysaccharides. What does poly mean? Poly means many. So now we're going to finally talk about many sugars linked together. There are two ways to denote many sugars. You can either say that they're involved in storage. Polysaccharides are either involved in storage or they're involved in structure or structural polysaccharides. Storage polysaccharides and structural polysaccharides. Two big differences between them. Storage polysaccharides are a great source of energy. They are very good energy for us to use. There are two types of storage polysaccharides you need to know. Those are starch and also glycogen. Glycogen. What type of monomer do you think makes up glycogen? We'll look at the word, glyco. Probably is going to be glucose. So it's a bunch of glucose linked together via tons and tons and tons of glycosidic bonds, right? It all makes sense. The only difference between these is that starches are found in plants. Plants store their sugar. They store their glucose in the form of starch. And this is going to be a bunch of alpha glucose subunits. So alpha glucose is just another type of glucose. That's the monomer. A bunch of these connected together via what? What makes them built up together? Glycosidic bonds, of course. Those are going to build up, and many, many, many thousands of them are going to form starch. In us, glycogen is prevalent. So we can write glycogen for animals as opposed to plants. And glycogen is also consistent of alpha glucose subunits. So now you might be thinking, well, aren't these exactly the same thing then? Just the difference is one is in starches, one is in, one is in plants, one is in animals. The only thing I want to mention about this, the only sort of caveat between this is that glycogen, or a G-L-Y, is actually pretty much larger than starch. Its formation is a little larger. It's uh, more branched. We don't need to get into the details about that. More branched, let's say. Uh, B-R-A-N-C. H, the more branched, and it's also um, going to be found in our liver usually, found in liver and muscle. Just know those facts, it's important. Good way to differentiate them. So this is our storage polysaccharides. Lastly, structural polysaccharides. There are two types of structural polysaccharides you need to know. One of them is cellulose. This is not the same thing as cellulite. Please, please do not associate this with cellulite, completely different things. This is cellulose, and the other one, uh, I'm just going to do it, we're running out a little bit of space, so let me try to drag it down over here, is chitin. Not chitin, but chitin. Chitin. So, these two structural polysaccharides are a little bit different. Um, cellulose is an extremely abundant polysaccharide. It's found everywhere because guess where it's located? If it's found everywhere, and you see, what you see everywhere in the world? Of course, plants. Cellulose is found in plants, um, and it is made up of not alpha glucose subunits, but this time beta glucose. So beta is denoted like this. If you can't really read that, this is beta. You draw a long line and then the regular B, that's beta glucose. So beta glue, running out of space, subunits. And in addition to this, one thing you want to note is that these are usually found in cell walls. This is what makes plants very rigid in their structure. It gives plants that hard structure that they have. Um, you will, I always think of cellulose being very abundant, let's say, in a tree bark. Tree bark has a tons of cellulose. Um, it's very fibrous also. And one thing you want to note about cellulose is the fact that it's actually, because it's made of beta-glucose subunits, this is actually difficult for us as humans to hydrolyze. If you remember, how did we break down bonds. How did we break down or deform polymers? It was through a process known as hydrolysis, right? Hydro, using water. Lysis. Lysis means to split. We actually can't split cellulose because we don't have the necessary enzymes to break down glucose, specifically in this beta glucose form. That's why it's difficult to hydrolyze for us. 
But then you might be asking, why do we eat plants then? What's the point? It's fibrous. Fiber is literally eaten and part of diets to literally help push things along. It can't be digested. There's no point in having fiber. The only point, because we can't absorb anything from it, what we do is we take fiber because it pushes things along in our digestive system and helps ease the burden on our body. That's why we that's why plants are very healthy and fibrous, very full of fiber for you because of this ability um, that they have cellulose. It's difficult to hydrolyze because it's made of beta glucose bonds. Now, last thing we want to talk about, um, and one more thing I want to mention about cellulose is that it's just very strong. It's a very strong, because it's structural, you know, it's a structure. You want to make sure that anything that's building structure is very strong, and cellulose is strong, once again, due to its chemistry, its beta glucose subunits. Last one for this video, chitin. Chitin is made up of, uh, this is sort of a fancy term, N-acetylglucosamine. Trying to fit this in here. N-acetylglucosamine. What's the point of chitin? Chitin is also made with that beta glucose subunit. So what does that tell you automatically about chitin? You expect it to be pretty strong, and it's also pretty difficult to hydrolyze. Um, but the only difference is that this is not found in plants. Chitin is actually found in two things. It's found in fungi within their cell walls. I'm trying to squeeze it in here. And also in uh, arthropods. You'll have a whole lecture on arthropods. Arthropods are things that have jointed appendages. Think insects. Think uh, crustaceans. These things, insects, when you crush an insect, we've all experienced this, you hear that sort of noise. When you hear that sort of noise, it's because you're destroying or crushing that structure that the insect has. That structure is a bunch of chitin. That chitin polymer built over and over and over again creates the insects, what is known as the exoskeleton. We as humans don't have an exoskeleton. We actually have an endoskeleton, but the insects have an exoskeleton made entirely of chitin. And this chitin is crushed. When you crush a bug, you're crushing its exoskeleton, its chitin polymer. So overall, this is our carbohydrate story. Carbohydrates are always found in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. They are the building blocks of sugars, and they have these specific rules that should be uh, denoted and understood. They usually end in the OS format, which denotes a sugar. We have different types of sugars, saccharides. We have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Monosaccharides are, of course, single sugars like glucose, galactose, and mannose that follow this 1 to 2 to 1 format. Disaccharides, this is where it gets interesting. These are, of course, linked together by condensation reactions because that's how we build a polymer. But more importantly, they're linked together by a covalent glycosidic linkages. Examples include maltose, sucrose, and lactose. And lastly, we have polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, two types found in nature most often are storage and structural. The two storage ones are starch. Those are in plants, and we have glycogen. Uh, the only difference between them is that glycogen is a little larger, more branched, and that's the one that we use. You should definitely know that glycogen is our form of storage, uh, polysaccharide storage. And we lastly covered structural polysaccharides like cellulose and chitin. Chitin is what those insects have. When you crush an insect, you're crushing its chitin exoskeleton. And cellulose is what gives plants their fiber, their fibrous material, and it's difficult for us to hydrolyze.